All right, so this is some stuff about me. You can go uh, take a look at this later. I've got uh, my slides linked at the very end, the last slide, so you can uh, check that out later. Um, we're going to be talking about React component patterns. And if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably heard me talk about component patterns a lot. And so this is kind of justifying um, why I'm so excited about component patterns and why I think uh, it would be a good idea for you to go learn about them as well. If my voice is a little hoarse, um, it's because karaoke last night. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah. Sunil learned that I really liked Linkin Park as a kid. Um, so I was going to do air squats. Um, say whoop if you want me to do air squats. That wasn't enough. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, physical health is really, really important in, in our industry. It helps your brain. It helps you think. So uh, don't, don't skip them like I just did now. Um, <laughs> Um, ben, Ben's got you taken care of, so, so we're doing okay. So uh, just to give you kind of an overview of what we're talking about, I like to start my talks out with expectations so you can decide whether you want to be on Twitter or not. Um, and uh, so we're going to be talking about a typical life cycle of a component. This isn't what you're thinking. Uh, this is a story. Um, I'm going to show you some patterns that you can use to simplify uh, this component, and we'll talk about composability, and I'll give you a challenge. Uh, this talk is not how to implement these patterns. Um, I have some resources toward the end of my slides, too, on how you can implement uh, some of these patterns. Um, and it's also not about a couple things that I just wanted to give a quick shout out to, um, because I think you should know about the React testing library. Woo! And Downshift, for sure. Downshift, yeah. Woo. Downshift is where I learned pretty much all of these patterns um, in, in the process of building Downshift. So uh, take a look at that if you're looking for an autocomplete or a drop down, kind of an enhanced input. Um, Babel plugin macros, woo! Yeah, OK, so everybody's like, what is Babel plugin? No, so Create React App version 2 will have this built in. So you'll want to learn what uh, Babel plugin macros is all about. Um, this is also not about glamorous, because that was deprecated. But it's not about emotion either. But that's what you should use. Um, emotion's great. Thank you, Kai. All right, let's jump into it. Here's the component that we're going to be um, walking along and learning about. It's an accordion. So you can open up these different items in the accordion. It's kind of cool. Um, so when you, uh, let, let's pretend for a second that you were tasked with building this. They gave you this design. And they, they said, we want to be able to open these different things and close them. Um, and each one of these has contents. We have this hand that we want to turn direction based on whether it's open. And so you say, great. And you are like, I'm loving this whole React thing. I can put my state right in there. And um, I, I can update the state when they click on it. It's so easy. And your API for this thing looks like this. Um, I added a note about the theme and font, so nobody asks me about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's um, Sarah Drasner uh, created this theme that everybody loves. It's awesome, and called Night Owl. And uh, Phil, and I can't say his last name, I'm sorry, um, is Dank Mono. So that's the font, and it's awesome. OK, so you build this component, and you're super excited because it encapsulates all this logic. And then somebody comes around and says, hey, that is a really cool component there. I would like to use it. And you say, awesome. Isn't that cool? With React, we can do this. And they say, yeah, but I have a different use case. I need things to be rendered above. Can you make it render above? And you say, yeah, sure. Um, we'll just have con some conditional logic here to render the contents above. We'll change, have some conditional logic for the um, hand, that direction that it's pointing. And all it's going to take is for you to add above equals true. So easy, right? And if you want to be super terse and you don't care about JSX version 2, then you can just say above all by itself. And you don't need the equals true. How easy could it be? Um, and so you're feeling pretty good about this. Like you've built something. People are starting to use it. And then somebody says, hey, I, I saw how you changed it so it could support above and below. I want it to support uh, the contents on the right, tabs on the left. Is that, is that a cool thing? Like, can we do that? And you say, yeah, sure, we can do that. Just write, it's true. And now we just have some conditional logic. We, we had to rewrite it a little bit because it was Flexbox before. And now we're going to do CSS grid, grid autoflow column. And now, like magic, it's so easy. Thank you, CSS grid, for making that easy to do. And um, you're starting to get a little uncomfortable because this render um, method is getting bigger. Um, and have some conditional logic. As you're adding these features, you have to add some tests to feel comfortable with, uh, with things. And of course, you're using React Testing Library. 
Um, but even with that, you're, it's starting to make you feel a little uncomfortable. And of course, somebody comes to you and says, hey, I noticed you could do right. Can I also do left? And you say, yeah, sure, just left is true and, and life is good. And then David K. Korshid, yes, David Korshid, a K piano man, um, he reminds you that, hey, this, this is like impossible states. We got left is true. What if I did right is true as well? What happens now? And so you refactor it, well, you rewrite it, and everybody's happy about this. You change position equals left. So now you got an enum. So every, everything's good. So there's a little um, lesson. Use enums. Don't, don't make po impossible states possible. Um, so now everybody's happy with that. They're, they're feeling pretty good. So the next thing that happens is somebody comes to you and, and, and you're feeling pretty uncomfortable about this render uh, method, it's getting pretty big, and somebody comes to you and you're, the first thing that they say is like, hey, that's really cool, and you're like, wait, wait, stop. Do you want me to change it? And they say, yeah, yeah, and you're like, okay, okay, what is it? And they say, well, it, the way that it renders is fine. And you're like, oh, good, okay, so wait, what do you want me to change? Well, the logic with um, how I can open all of these at once I actually only want to be able to open one at a time. Is that something you can do? And you say, yeah, I guess so. Like, I leave my render method as it is. I don't need to touch that. I just need to touch like, or, or deal with the code that's handling the click here. And so you say, OK, just a little if statement to make that possible. And now we can only open one at a time. That wasn't, that wasn't all that bad. Now we have the single true, and that's, that's fine, no big deal. Um, and somebody comes to you again and says, hey, I noticed we can actually change the state. I've had this like, bug for a long time. People shouldn't be able to close all of the items. I, I need to, like, they can open as many as they want, but they can only close down to one. So only one, uh, or one has to be open at all times. So you say, okay, yeah, I can make that happen. I click here, it doesn't, doesn't actually close. Can only close down to one at a time. And that's prevent close, it's true, okay. Yeah, so now you have a bunch of conditional logic in your render uh, method. You've got some conditional logic in your click handler. It's not too bad, but you're starting to feel a little uncomfortable about this. And then somebody comes to you and says, hey, you know how like that single one at open at a time, can I combine that with um, opening only one? Like, so I can only open one at a time, but I can't close it. Is that, is that possible? And you say, yeah, that's, that's possible. We can make that work. So I, I can't close this, and I can only open one at a time. You just use both of the props. And so you're so happy because just naturally out of nowhere, the act, it's, it's supported. And so you're like, oh, sweet. I don't have to change anything ever again because it supports all the use cases in the world. And then somebody's looking at this, and they're playing around with it, and they say, huh, we got something we click on and then it shows some contents. It only shows one at a time. That looks like a different component that I need to build. How about a tabs UI? One at a time, constant, yeah, yeah. Can we make a tabs UI out of this? <laughs> and you say, no. <laughs> My render uh, is too complicated already. And they say, no, listen, listen. It is just an if statement. And you say, I've heard that before. It's never just an if statement. <laughs> and they say, no, listen, I, I promise. It's just so at the top of your render method, if this.props.tabs return this.rendertabs. And we'll put all that logic for the tabs rendering in a different method. And I won't have to touch the rest of your render method. So it'll be so easy. And you know, you need to ship stuff, right? We need to ship stuff. Michael Chan told us this morning we just got to ship. And I believe that. So we'll have a tabs prop. But inside, you're feeling like somebody has betrayed you and sad. And then somebody comes and says, hey, could I render those tabs about? <laughs> and that's when you really say no. And they copy and paste your code and make it tabs component. And uh, now everybody's sad because you have duplicate code all over the place. But you're shipping, so that's good. So. Um, I really want to drive home that the importance of shipping is uh, like, it's more important to ship than to do all the things I'm going to teach you. But what if we could ship and not feel terrible about our code at the same time? That's what I'm going for here. So um, let's extrapolate this a little bit further. I think you're getting the idea. This does not stop ever. So you continue to add things like, you're ch now you're changing your data to map to, um, to your features of your accordion. So these are basically more props. 
Uh, disabled is false. Now we have an open title. We have this, uh, like the prompts that we had before, but now we have an open trigger. What if you want to open on focus and close on blur? And then maybe we have a title class name and a, a contents class name so we can customize the styling. And now I, I need to know when the user's triggering so I can fire off analytics and the close class name, open class name. And here's one of my favorites. Anything that's prefixed with render is, is my favorite prop. Render expand all button. Render cows when this, the sun is up. Like, whatever it is, there, because we don't have any control over rendering and you want to, to share this logic around, you're going to have these render specific props. Um, so, here are the reasons why this is a problem beyond just like feeling frustrated yourself and always having to come back to this accordion that's getting worse and worse. Um, bundle size and perf take a hit. So, um, initially, we made like this 30 line accordion component that was so simple. And, um, and it, it's pretty small. But now, to support all of these use cases, it's grown to 200 or 500 lines of code. And in your app, um, you don't like, need that. You need 30 of those lines. So like, if, if you could tree shake code within a component, you would, uh, you would do that, but you can't. So you're shipping a, a ton of code to your users that you're never actually using. Um, and in, in addition to that, like maybe other parts of the app are using it, but maybe entirely different apps are using it. So they're suffering for your use cases as well. And then maintenance overhead. This is like not really very fun to maintain. Um, you have to worry about documentation. You have to worry about answering people's questions about these different props that you're supporting because they're all really um, kind of single use case specific and you add a, a new prop to every single use case that people come up with that you haven't thought of before. Um, so it's not fun to maintain. Um, implementation complexity increases, and that um, has a uh, correlation with bugs that enter the code base. So as people come in to contribute, which of course you're going to have other people contribute their use cases, right? Because you don't want to touch it anymore. Um, but they have to learn about every, all the use cases that are already being supported. So it's harder to contribute and bugs uh, sneak in a lot easier because this um, component is so complex. Uh, and the API, this is probably my, my biggest beef with, um, with this props explosion that we're seeing here is um, you have to document e each one of these props and everybody who comes in to use your component has to read every single one of those props to figure out whether um, those props are necessary for their use case. And that is not fun. Uh, the examples are always out of date because now there's this new prop that does this better. Uh, and so this, all this just makes everybody sad and highlighted somehow. There we go. <laughs> so um, I was, uh, when I was researching uh, for this talk, I asked Twitter, some of you may have responded, um, what uh, is the uh, reusable component that you've used that has the most number of props? And the winner was a 60 prop component that's open source. I'm not going to name names because that would be mean. Um, but it has 60 props. And then there are some props that are specific, like, like options props, which you're not kidding anybody. Those are just more props. <laughs> it's like this object that has like 30 options. Like, yeah, you just added 30 props to your component um, for all intents and purposes. And uh, somebody responded to that tweet and said, her name's Jen Creighton. I call that an apropocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Made the world a better place with a new hashtag. So what if I told you all of those demos that you saw were built on the same 37 line component that supports all of those use cases in 37 lines? Go ahead, really quick, try to implement the whole thing in 37 lines. OK, are you done? OK, let's take a look. Good job. So I don't want you to focus too much on the specific implementation here. Um, but the, there are two patterns that exist in this implementation that enable this kind of flexibility and simplicity. And we're going to look at um, how to use this component more. But here we're using render props, um, which have really taken steam in the community. You've probably heard of them. Um, it's this.props.children. We're just calling that as a function. We pass it our state and a mechanism for updating our state. And um, now people can render whatever they like. And then we're also using a state reducer, um, which is one you might not be familiar with um, that is, uh, uh, enables users to um, change the state as it's being um, updated. So it, it can modify how the state updates happen. 
Um, so both of these patterns are actually implementations of a concept called inversion of control. And what that basically means is normally with a library, you're going to call into the library. Like you're, you're going to call to get uh, to render a React component or something. Um, inversion of control is where um, the library calls back into the user code to um, say, hey, um, I'm going to be doing this thing. What, what do you want me to do about that? And you can make modifications to it. So let's take a look at a demo. Thank you, Evis, for Code Sandbox. Who loves Code Sandbox? Yeah! This thing is the coolest, the coolest thing. Um, OK, so here's our accordion. And our base accordion is that component that you saw earlier. So this is our implementation that um, builds out our accordion. So with the base accordion, we're uh, just accepting some items, and then we spread the rest of the props so we can um, override some of the um, accordion or base accordion's props. Um, so the user of accordion can override the base uh, accordion's props. And then we're providing our um, children as a function or our render prop. And that's taking our open indexes and our handle item click. And from there on out, it's totally our responsibility. So um, this is actually a significantly like, more difficult to use API than this. right? You have a lot more work to do. This is what inversion of control is. It's giving you control and responsibility. Um, but because of React's co composition model, you can actually, um, now I can use this accordion like I used that first accordion. It's just call accordion, pass it some items. And the cool thing about this is that um, I, I can use React composition model to create that, and then I can keep adding more logic to this accordion to make it support all the different use cases we were talking about without making any changes to the base accordion. Um, and why that is neat is because if this accordion doesn't support the use case that I have, I can just go copy all of this code and uh, go make my own implementation. And this code to copy is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of logic going on, um, and it's, it's less painful to copy. And in, in an accordion example, like the accordion is 37 lines, uh, downshift, for example, is a lot longer than uh, 37 lines of code. And so there's a lot more code that we can share there. Um, and then we can duplicate this specific um, rendering um, so that we can have our specific use cases. So anyway, let's say um, I build this thing, and then the coworker comes and says, hey, that's a pretty cool, um, cool accordion you got there, Kent. What can I do about um, having it render, render the contents above the button? You say, literally just take these emotion components. These are just like style uh, components, like styled components kind of thing. Just take these components and move them. And you're done. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you're not quite done, because this emoji is pointing the wrong way. So we'll just point um, up. And now it's pointing the right way. That was Alfred. Somebody's going to ask me. That was Alfred. <laughs> So cool, and then somebody says, hey, I want to render it on the left or right, then you say, hey, this accordion item um, is an, an emotion component that's like total style concern. We're using CSS grid over there. So if you change direction to horizontal, then it's going to use CSS grid uh, and grid auto flow column, and now you can have things rendering the right direction. So here we'll move this um, hand pointing this way, and then we'll have a, whoops, a point right. And ta-da, cool, right? And then uh, if you want, there's like, hold on, hold on, that's pretty cool, but I need my contents on the other side. Yep, ta-da. And we'll just move those emoji over there. It's pretty easy when you have control over rendering, right? You just, you literally are in control. You do whatever you want. You, you want to have a little thing that says, hello in the title, it's all yours, feel free. Um, you want to use styled components instead of emotion, you want to use regular CSS, um, that, like, all of that power is in your hands. That's the power of inversion of control. So going back to our original, um, when some, that person comes to you and says, hey, I need the logic to be different now, like, I can't do that with a render prop, you say, that's why we have a state reducer. So we have this three-line function called single. I wasn't going to show you, but I'm going to show you really quick. Um, single, there it is. OK, it's four lines. I was wrong. I should have reviewed first. Four line function uh, that just takes your state, your changes, and if the state type is opening, then we're going to change the open indexes to only have the one. 
Uh, and then our prevent close works in a similar way. If we're closing and we have more than or less than one that are already open, then we'll uh, not allow that close to happen. So with that, we can add a state reducer. And we'll put single here. And that's all it takes to borrow something from uh, uh, Shirley yesterday. So cool, that's, that's pretty easy. Well, what about the prevent close? Cool, now I can't close this one, but I can open multiple, and then I can close this one, okay? And then uh, to combine those, it's just some more little bit of JavaScript here that will combine reducers, single, and prevent close. And now we get both of those uh, functionality. I can't close it, and I can open it. Cool, right? So now with React's composition model, I can actually um, create a tabs component uh, to kind of encapsulate those reducers. So I don't have to think about those reducers as a user of the tabs component. So now I have this base tabs that uh, passes combined reducers for single and prevent close, and the state reducer that you can provide if you want to. So you can even add more customization on the base tabs if you want to. So that's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and um, we'll use that in our tabs here. We have base tabs. So let me render tabs instead of the accordion. And now we've got our tabs, ta-da. And here we're using base tabs just like we use the accordion, but as far as we're concerned, like who knows what's going on? We, we're not even using class components here. Um, it's all just React's beautiful composition model that we've, we've grown to love. And so here with tabs, we are accepting those items. We map over those for both the, um, the buttons as well as the item contents. And then when that person comes along and says, hey, I want the buttons to be below the contents, we're doing some sort of iOS fake thing, so we want the buttons below, right? And then um, this tab item is just an emotion component, and so we'll say the position is above, and that will change that um, animation so it animates the right way. Um, and with all of this, we didn't have to change our base accordion at all. And as far as the uh, tabs is concerned, we don't know that it's using the accordion under the hood. Um, because the accordion actually supports that use case and uh, tabs can kind of abstract away that implementation detail. Which is one of the reasons we love React so much is because we can do that. So thank you, Evis. So uh, I promise you resources. If, uh, so I've got this advanced React component patterns course available on Egghead.io and Frontend Masters. If you're brand new into React, then my beginner React course um, is available for free on Egghead. Uh, so start with that first. Uh, you'll probably get lost here. Feel free, um, but uh, yeah. Um, before I wrap up, I just want to give you a word of caution. So what if you're building this accordion component? We're taking it, going back to the future, or back in time for a second. And um, what if this is all that you know that you need right now? You don't know of the future potential use cases. Um, should you implement all of these uh, flexible features right from the get-go? My suggestion is probably not. Um, this morning, Michael Chan talked about how um, you were, he suggested making that modal JS, and you're like, this is going to be the end-all, be-all of modals. Um, my recommendation is don't assume that you're going to solve the world, and don't try to solve the world, because you're going to uh, waste a lot of time. Um, that metaphor is messed up. We should be working to improve the world, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but hopefully you get my gist. Try to s solve the problem that you're intending to solve and, and then stop and ship it. And then when uh, additional use cases come up, that's when you start looking into, okay, how can we make this more flexible so we can support not only the new use case, but a lot of other use cases that are coming up. You ain't gonna need it. You should be optimizing for deletability because everything eventually will be erased from existence. Um, in other words, listen to Michael. Uh, smart, smart dude there. So my challenge to you is to use patterns that simplify your API. Um, so we talked about some of these state reducers, control props, provider, the provider pattern, which I'm so glad is built into React now with the context. Uh, compound components, render props. The cool thing about um, software is that we're constantly rediscovering old um, principles that they knew like in the 60s and 70s and applying them to today's problems. And that, that's all lots of these things are. Inversion of control is not a new concept. Like we, we didn't invent that. 
um, we just applied that to React. And that's what's really exciting to me. So I would love to, in, in years time, give this talk again and be able to put a lot more patterns on this slide. So my challenge to you is to go rediscover more patterns. That's all for me. Thank you.